back to meticulous mechanic. I'm doing a quick cooling system overview. You have your water pump here and the water pump drain. You got the water pump inlet hose, which goes in under the radiator outlet hose, which is connected to the thermostat assembly, which has the oil cooler outlet hose going into the oil cooler and the oil cooler inlet hose, which goes up to the water jacket joint and to the radiator inlet hose. Let's remove the radiator outlet hose first. Imagine the water is going to run out of this bottom clamp first. I saw a larger set of these. I'm being very careful not to poke my hose, but kind of getting it free. Let's see if it'll come off now. I went and got a bigger drain pan. So I move the camera so you can see it spill over all over the place. Hopefully not. Oh. We obviously had drained the main bulk out on the previous video. Let that drain out. See if we can get the top to come off as easy. Ah, that wasn't too bad. I squeeze this water pump inlet hose. A little came out before, but let's do the radiator inlet hose next. It's going into this water jacket joint. That's where it comes out of the engine block. Radiator inlet hose coming off. So my new lights will be mounted on a tripod and hopefully it won't be as obnoxious as this. I'm just undoing this screw, water jacket joint, radiator inlet hose. Go ahead and drain the liquid from the first hose. That was the radiator outlet hose. Actually, there was a lot of coolant in that hose still, even after I drained it from the drain plug out of the water pump. Let's see how much comes out of this radiator inlet hose. Not too much. Let's look into this water jacket joint for fun. That's it there. That just goes straight into the engine. So the way I test my holes, my, my holes for gloves, my gloves for holes, is just go like this. And if they don't leak, you don't, you don't have holes. Anyway, we're back onto the removing the radiator. And we got stuck. 
on step six radiator fan motor coupler. That's why I had to remove the air box so I could find that. And number seven, the radiator hose cylinder head to radiator. We just did eight and nine radiator inlet and outlet hose. So let's go over to the motorcycle, see if we can find that. Radiator fan motor coupler and radiator hose, cylinder head to radiator. So radiator hose, cylinder head to radiator. Shining my light on it. Right there. And it goes up there. So without the light, and if I go the other way, be like this and down under here so I couldn't find the radiator fan motor coupler from this side of the bike and I even looked in here that's that radiator hose that goes to the cylinder head so that's why I took the air box off yesterday so let's see if we can find it. So far, just a stray piece of electrical tape. Cut that off. All right, now we're closer to finding it. So I don't see anything obvious from this side. So I'm just gonna tilt the radiator down by loosening this screw and this screw, and then it pivots down here. I ordered a new bushing, this one's all screwed up. That's my good friend, Rob. Okay, this time I gotta keep it short. So these Allen keys I showed you in the last video are pretty cool. You can slide this back and forth. That'll make me get it in this other spot easier. So here's the right one. And like I said, you just go like that. Rotate this a little bit. You can spin it. For the left one, I can't get my tool in here because this wire's in the way. Right there. I just bought this stubby hex key set from Park Tool, mainly because there's a cam chain tensioner that's going to need this. So let's grab out the five millimeter. They're just shorter right here. See if this solves my problem. There we go. Went in there really nice. Let's see if we can get it loose. There we go. This one has a ball end on here. Right here. That's so you can put it in at an angle. And turn. I should have just started with this mini ratchet I showed you yesterday. This is a five millimeter. So I'll do the left side and the right side. The right side will be like this, and then the whole thing should spin down. Here's a close up of the left side. That wire really is kind of in the way. There we go. I've had these for a while, park key handles, and it's got the ball end on there. So let's see if that works good at an angle. Oh, there we go. The ball allows me to have this angled. Like that, you can see how it, you can put the wrench in at an angle. Can only go to a certain angle though, else it slips. You don't want to use this for tightening, or I mean loosening when something's really tight. You just use it for to spin stuff out fast. So it looks like it's out now. I can just push this wire back a little and then grab it. There it is. Let's go do the other side. This is what I used yesterday with a Phillips head, but this is a five millimeter with an extension. Pull this collar back and it snaps in. 
Always make sure it's spinning counterclockwise. You're taking stuff out counterclockwise. Here we go. Get her done. So I'm hoping this just rotates down. Okay, let's, let's see what's going on. There might be some bushings in the way. So there's a link in the description if you want to buy me a coffee, and I will be buying some lights and updating my computer system. But no pressure, obviously. So there's a rubber grommet here. And then there's a metal spacer. And it actually needs to push back in like this. There, now that... That side's loose. Let's check the other side. So this horn's a little bit in the way. I'm just going to take it off with a 10 millimeter. I got a ratcheting 10 millimeter. So that's loosen, spin it around, and that's tighten. So make sure it's on loosen first, which is that way. a nut back here yeah and there was a washer and a nut so that just mounted up right there I'm just gonna kind of hook it up out of the way for now so it's always a good idea to look at everything really close when you take it apart because there's actually another washer on the back of this Horn. So you got to make sure this washer goes on first. It's black guy. When we go to put it back together, and then this washer was on the other side. So one washer on either side of the bracket. So that's we already saw this. Let's see the other side of this bracket. And I can just bring this up, hang it there for now. And now we can get to this other bolt we are trying to take off. One on the right side of the radiator. So the right side is a little bit more complicated. You got the radiator, not the radiator, the clutch cable coming down this goes behind this. This is where the front fork mounts. I actually have that out for service. So I may do that a video on that myself. I'm not sure yet. The clutch cable comes down. Down like this. And it goes into this bracket. So there's the metal frame. It's mounted to the engine. There's the a little bracket. And then this is the part we're trying to get off with the radiator here. So let me set the camera down on the tripod. So here's the metal frame. It's mounted to the engine. Here's the clutch cable coming down. There's a metal bracket. That's the rubber bushing that's holding the radiator on. And this is metal right here. So I moved the tripod for just a slightly different angle. Clutch cable coming down. There's a little bent metal thing here that's holding the clutch cable on. Then there's this bracket. This is where the bolt threads in back here. Right back in here. So let's see. Let's get this apart. Okay, I'm going to pull back on the radiator. It looks like this whole bracket that is holding the clutch cable. 
kind of coming off as a piece. Oh, there we go. Let's just pause there. So this comes out. Let me get it so you can see how it comes out. See under here. You can see the bolt hole. There's the bolt, bolt hole. So this will come off. Actually, it just comes out almost like. Hold that there. Yeah, there we go. Hard to keep your thumb out of the way. Oh, yeah. There we go. So that slides back in there. I think that's pretty clear. We'll be able to get that back together. So here's what the piece looks like. If I spin it. So I should have removed this hose before I undid those two bolts. It's the cylinder head to radiator hose. This is kind of jiggly right now, but we'll just have to live with it, see what happens. And squeeze these. So I just put that left bolt back in to stabilize this. Didn't take too long. So now I can squeeze like I did before. And I should be able to push with a little screwdriver here. That's why I had to put the bolt back in to get this off. If anybody knows of an easier way, just put it down in the comments. There we go, I got it off. Now I just got to get that hose off. Okay, good. It doesn't look like it's going to be a pain. It's sliding very easily off. Probably full of fluid a little bit. Okay, good. That's off now. On that left bolt, I probably would have just come in with an Allen key from the side like this instead of the other way I did it. But you learn as you go sometimes. Also, I would have left the radiator inlet and outlet hoses on because even though it's been drained for two days and I drained the hoses out, there's still little drips out of the radiator that I'm wiping up, but it's not too bad, just tiny little annoying drips. So that left bolt's just partially in so I could get that hose off. I had it all the way in, but I noticed, you know, on the other one on the right side's totally out. But normally... But usually, sorry about the banging, let's see, focus it. Usually it just pivots right around here, but you can see this rubber thing's ripped. There you can see it's, there we go. So it's probably just gonna fall, but I did order a new one of those, so normally it would pivot, but I'm gonna have to finagle it and get ready to catch, plus that wire. Oh, it just came loose there. On Actually, the whole thing just came loose. See, it mounts on this. Right in. There. I bought this adjustable rolling tray. It's actually for a tattoo parlor. I'm not going to set it up under the radiator just to catch it in case it falls. goes up and down which is nice there's a little knob under here I'm afraid when it falls that wire that I'm trying to find I might not be able to get the connector off while I'm trying to hold this up that's why I have this tray here just to give me a second hand I'm gonna take all the slack out of this system that way it's just gonna hold it for me all right, I got 95% of the slack out when it falls. 
Go ahead and take that left bolt out and see what happens. Oh, good thing I had that there because it did fall. That's because that bottom grommet was broken. Now, let's see. This should tilt now. It's caught up on something. Yep, it's that fan wire. That radiator just wants to keep leaking. Look at all that. So the mystery of the fan wire is, in, is solved. Comes in right here. It's up like that. Let me move the camera. You would think you spend $80 on a service manual and they'd give one little picture saying, hey, there's the radiator cap. And right back here is this little wire coming up under here. And then it's hidden by this big harness. So let's move the camera again. So there it is coming out of the radiator. That big wiring harness. And right up under here, right there, see it. And if you come over here, it actually goes into this connector this connector right here. So we've got to get that undone. So this video was probably worth all the effort just so you know where that little connector is. So that would be another huge video on the electrical system, but for now we'll just concentrate on one thing at a time. There's that connector I need to get off. And it's hard to get back here because it's behind this. And I realized it looks like, looks like this guy just kind of slides off a rubber mount. Like that. Okay, good. So that comes off of there. Onto that thing. That's giving me a little slack to get to the connector I want to get apart. I still can't get this connector apart without wrecking something. So I'm going to take off this bigger connector. It's got this rubber band that comes around here. And you can see this slot that it goes into. Should just come off like a rubber band, hopefully. Okay. There we go. That's sliding off. It's pretty simple. There we go. So it has the two slots there and then the one on the top there and it slides back on these two things here right there and there so there it is there's the upper slot it's the thing it slides on and then the lower one and here's our wire and motor coupling wire Actually, it's joined in pretty tight to this plug. If anybody in the comments knows what all these are, just let me know. But I'll figure it out later. So if I can get this undone, I can get the radiator off. If we've gone this far, you might as well just take this air scoop off. It's actually a fake air scoop. Pretty simple. Two bolts. Plug your ears. This might be loud. Make sure it's going counterclockwise. 10 millimeter with one. So there's just two bolts that look like this. And take it off slowly so we can get it back on. So it'll go back on like that. I'll mount on these two holes. Of course, the place I need to spin or pinch is on the back side. But if you knew and you could reach your hand up here without doing all that work, you would know that you just have to squeeze this right there. Squeeze that in. 
and pull. There we go. Try to get it back together. Looks like it just has a little hook here. Got two wires coming out of it. And then there's a hole. This hole right here. That's where this little thing, when you squeeze, see that there we go that little hook hooks into that hole that we saw into the hole so hopefully it'll just come off now there's our wire right here went under that Uh, there's still something on there. I'll have to see what it is in a sec. So what it is is this air induction system number six. I don't know why they don't just tell you that there's a little rubber mount that goes in this hole right here. And I'll show you where that is. Okay, here we go right here I'm going to reach around the radiator and hold it with my left hand and then jiggle this thing it's just slid on like a rubber mount I'm holding the radiator with my left hand and okay we're totally free now The moment of truth. There it is. Looks like more fluids running out of it. I'm going to get a bigger pan if I do this next time, just a big plastic tub. But luckily we made do with what we had. Here's where the fan plugged in. If we go around the corner, this just looks like a loose wiring harness. There's a big gaping hole. Here's where your forks mount. That was where that horn went. This is that radiator hose that goes to the cylinder head that plugged into the radiator. This is that little hole where the radiator, the last thing holding it on, it's just a slip fit. Here's your air induction system. And here, once I clean this up, I'll kind of analyze this a little bit more. And a little fluid. Radiator hoses, the air box, the old air filter. Now we're actually down to the radiator, so let's take a look at that. So here's where the radiator cap and the overflow bottle connected. Here's a little port that goes to the cylinder head radiator hose. Obviously wiring connector to the fan, electrical. And the fan spins. This was the upper mounting, the two upper mounting points there and there. And then either inlet or outlet. Inlet or outlet, I got it rotated 180, but it doesn't matter for this shot. And here's that middle bushing that it's supposed to rotate on. We'll have to figure out how that goes on because it's a little confusing. Turn it over and look at the other side. 
actually that's just what you see from the outside radiator inlet and outlet little mounting point left mounting point for that one bolt right mounting point <laughs> mounting point it's like that's pretty much it for now don't forget to subscribe and like if you have any comments i usually just like constructive criticism and if you like the video just click like we'll have to clean up this bench every time you do a job it ends up kind of a mess but i like to clean it up every time when i'm done so i'm ready for the next job so the last thing is this radiator stay this is where that ripped grommet is i think you just slide the grommet in here and it slides on like this and then the two upper bolts hold it in place so i looked at the schematic and there's just one bolt holding this on right there it's a 10 millimeter let me get my impact all right plug your ears there we go that's what that looks like so it came unmounted from this hole here it looks like this So let's see, there's the bolt I just took out. That'll go up there like this, under there. And then the bolt will go in right there. Just a 3D, it was sitting in there like that.